In this video, I want us to have a look at a post shared out by David D. William Ruto's economic advisor, a post that has been generating a lot of heated political debate. David D. We have restored a flexible i.e. market exchange rate. This is to say exchange rate is not a policy target. It will settle where market clears, i.e. demand equals supply. The president speculated where he thought that would be. He is not an economist. We advised him to refrain from doing so in future. In a nutshell, David is confirming to the whole country that he advised William Ruto to refrain from making some pronouncements in public. And in this case, David is referring to William Ruto's remarks some few months ago on the exchange rate, dollar to Kenya shillings. William Ruto months ago, in broad daylight, told Kenyans that after some few months, the Kenya shilling could have strengthened against the dollar. In fact, he gave a rough figure of around 115, 115 Kenya shillings to one dollar. Yes. But since Ruto made those remarks, the Kenya shilling has been weakening against the dollar. As I talk, the dollar is almost 150. While Ruto promised that by now, the dollar ought to have been around 115 Kenya shillings. So the remarks has exposed Ruto as a liar. Somebody who's just making pronouncements he is not very sure about. So David is confirming that he advised William Ruto to refrain from making such remarks. That's very interesting, ladies and gentlemen. I want us to dissect these remarks for Kenyans to understand the truth behind this post being shared out by David Dean. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give this video a like. Let's proceed. Yes. Let me start by asking this simple question. Is William Ruto advisable? And I'm asking that question because there are some pronouncements Ruto has been making in public Pronouncements that are very unfortunate. Earlier today in Bungoma, he made some remarks that clearly shocked very many Kenyans. In our earlier analysis, we dug deep into those remarks and I did explain what the remarks meant. For those who might have missed the remarks, listen to this before we continue. <laughs> Iyo company ni company ya wananchi na tutaipangia upya. Hakuna kesi tuta entertain hapo. Kesi watoe na wao wenyewe watoke. Nyenye mnanielewa? Tunaelewana? Na nimeambia mambo ni mangapi? Matatu. Wakitaka kuniletea kisirani? Either wahame Kenya ama nitawaweka jela ama wasafiri waende mbinguni. Yes. That was William Ruto in Bungoma today. A president who should be a symbol of national unity, who should be actually wooing investors to come in the country, is threatening an assassination on an investor. Very unfortunate remarks. And those remarks left very many Kenyans wondering again, who are these advisors advising William Samoy Ruto? 
because personally I strongly believe that a person in the stature of a president, you should be very mindful of what you say in public. If a whole president can threaten an assassination on an investor, an investor who some few days ago was kidnapped, that's painting Kenya as a failed country, a banana republic, where the rule of law has clearly broken down. It's total anarchy. Ruto is denting the image of Kenya, not only locally, but also internationally. He's making this country appear as a failed country or a failed state. And the remarks were very unfortunate. So when David Lee says that he advised William Ruto to refrain from making some pronouncements in public, if that is true, then it confirms William Ruto cannot be advised. He can't be advised. And I'm saying that because he has been making so many such pronouncements, we still remember Ruto saying that by June, cooking gas was to retail between 300 to 500 Kenya shillings. That never happened. He made a U-turn. And Kenyans can also remember William Ruto promising that out of the 3% housing levy, hustlers were to own houses. The 3% later turned to 1.5% and it, it was now confirmed as tax. So Ruto has been very fast in making pronouncements that always backfire. And uh, all those confirms that either he is not advisable or he doesn't have wise advisors who can actually push him and tell him the truth. David Nick confirms from those remarks that William Ruto is very clueless when it comes to governance or govern governance issues. And that can also explain why the pledges William Ruto made when he was campaigning for the presidency, he has not been able to fulfill even one. He has not fulfilled any. Instead, we are seeing a William Ruto who is still giving new promises and mainly is already, or rather he has started 2027 presidential campaigns. So we have somebody who campaigned in 2022 promising to do some things. He made some pledges. And one year after he's, he has been elected, he has forgotten about the promises he made. He is now campaigning for the next election. And from what we are seeing, he is most definitely going to sustain the campaign. He is not going to deliver. That's why it's important for Kenyans to wake up. And also the remarks, the threatening remarks, Ruto is going to destroy Kenya's economy in that investors will shy away from Kenya. And I'm seeing a very high possibility where very many companies will collapse because Ruto will force them to actually do what he wants. And from what we have seen, in the one year of William Ruto's rule, it's all about corruption. So I'm seeing a Ruto's government that will force these private companies to enter or rather to work together. And then I'm seeing some rogue government officials who will be demanding bribes from, from those private industries and companies. And that will be the beginning of the death of those private industries. And I'm saying that because already Trigger Foods that was given 300 million Kenya shillings from the Hustlers Fund is already on its deathbed. <coughs> Actually sucking employees, saying that things are very bad. Hmm? Trigger was doing far much better than it's actually doing now that 
it has entered into some entered into some partnership with the Ruto's government. So I'm seeing that Ruto is going to destroy very many companies in that is going to force them to work with him or with this government. And from what we have seen with Kenya Kwanza government, it's all about corruption. These politicians are very greedy individuals. They live and go to some extent of giving these private companies some tenders and they will demand a share from those tenders. And in this case, they'll actually even demand 80% of the profits. They'll even be telling the companies that if we give you this tender, you're going to make this profit. So ours is this. That will be the collapse of the private companies. And that will spell doom for Kenya and for the youths in that unemployment will go up. Let me stop it there, ladies and gentlemen. The remarks by Indy confirms one thing. Ruto is very naive when it comes to governance. And the remarks can also signal that things might not be very smooth in Ruto's government. David Indy might not be a happy man in this government, and it might be possible that in the coming days, we might see a David Indy resigning from this government. Because this is not the first time he's trying to expose what is going on behind the scenes. I know William Ruto would not love it when he exposed that he advised him to do this and, the, and that. I don't think William Ruto will love that. Let's meet in our next analysis. Thank you. God bless you.